bring to the stage a world-famous cardiologist who recently stepped away from UCSD and the VA after 35 years of patient care to reinvent himself. Cardiologist, if they're going to have a heart attack, this is the time to do it. Please put your uh, hands together for Alan Mazel. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to do a little call out for the La Mesa Senior Baseball League. You know, so yeah. 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 Thanks for coming. Um, you can tell who they are if you look over there. In one hand, they have a mitt. The other, they have their urinary catheter <laughs> and their bladder pouch. You know, um, it's senior, and that's how we keep the uh, baseball field uh, irrigated. So, <laughs> hey, I was um. I was born to be a cardiologist, guys. I, I swear to God, I was. When I came out, you know, you get the spank on the butt. No, my doctor actually took some fibrillation paddles, one on each cheek, and that started me off. And when I was just a teenager, people started to crash and burn in front of me. Cardiac arrest in front, and it's continued to this day. You don't look so good. No. <laughs> so, I learned about it, I studied it, I became comfortable, I don't get bothered by what I have to do. But it's just, it's just how it happens. You know, about 10 years ago here, I went to the opening of a burger place in town, and right at the beginning, someone, boom, went down on the fries, and their heart stopped. So what I did is I grabbed the AED, the defibrillator thing off the wall, set it on his body, and it read ventricular tachycardia. That's a fast heartbeat you don't want to have, <clears throat> because you'll die. <clears throat> so. <laughs> later shot him. He was in it and out of it. Thank God. Ten seconds later, he was in it again. Boom! And then out of it. Twenty minutes. In and out. In and out. In and out. In and out. Finally, he stabilized. Oh my God. I was so happy. And it took me two weeks to understand that the name of this burger restaurant was not named after what I did. They were in and out. So, but if you go to the one in Carlsbad, and as for the Dr. Mazel special, it is an in and out of VTAC burger. <laughs> it comes with chipotle and a little Lipitor sauce. Just because <laughs> you guys, you guys do it. So, saving someone on the ground is a lot different than 40,000 feet in the air. <clears throat> it's a real shit show up there. Oh my God. There was a guy that arrested a few years ago while I was watching a movie. So I went over and laid him down and do CPR on him. 30 minutes. Now CPR, what are you trying to do? You're trying to push blood from the heart to the brain. Okay? But it didn't work. Why? The movie he was watching was Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> All that blood was here and none right there. <laughs> he turned Fifty Great Shades of Grey to one shade of dead. And that was it. <laughs> made out okay in this because he put his body in my seat and I got upgraded to first class. <laughs> you get frequent flying miles over there, I just cash in some frequent dying miles. <laughs> so deal with it. Now, I like to play tennis and a while back I was playing tennis with this Canadian guy who kept cheating on me. Every time I'd hit it near the line, he would go, oot, oot, that's oot too, it's oot. It's out, I tell you. Well, I my breath out, I was wishing this guy would just die. I was the guy. And in the third set, he did. <laughs> right at the neck. You know, the idiot should have tried to jump over the damn thing. So he's laying there, and I gotta tell you, for a moment I was thinking, should I save this guy? <laughs> Couldn't the world do better with one less asshole? You know? Well, you think about that too, but I saved him. And he made it, lucky for him, but also lucky for me, because during the resuscitation, a little bit of oxygen deprivation to the brain, and, and now when we play, I can call every shot of his, out, out, out. He doesn't get it, you know, a little lack of function. So, <laughs> so I, I, I win all the games. So, you know, Da, da Quixote, man of La Mancha, huh? The dream, the impossible dream. Well. I go along with that calling because so many people have dropped dead in front of me. And so, uh, let me just, uh, this, this is my quest 
to follow that star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far, to stand for the right without any deliberation, to march into hell for ventricular fibrillation. Okay. <laughs> hey, Don Quixote, man of La Mancha, Senora Maisel, man of La Jolla. <laughs> we could deal with that. So, but it didn't start off very good, you know? I was an intern in the south side of Chicago. My very first night, on call, three in the morning, there goes the loudspeaker. Code blue, room 343, three, code blue 343. Three. I jumped out of the bed, and like Don Quixote, I mounted my steed, I galloped in the room, opened the door, turned on the light, and there's a guy laying there. It was worse than that, he's actually laying there, his mouth was open. And to tell you the truth, it was sort of warm out, and no air conditioning up there, he had a little fly. Oh. Yeah, that's, they do that. So I <laughs> took my fist, here comes internship, wham! And just as I live, please live, he sat up and punched me in the face. <laughs> and just as he did that, the loudspeaker came back, correction, code blue, room 345, not room 343. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> internship. You know, mistakes happen. I tell you, when I was a medical student at the University of Michigan, we had this old German lady neurologist take us on the wards. She wanted to demonstrate that tertiary syphilis can lose, you can lose all genital pain. All your nerves go out. That's not the toxic. You screw around too much, you're not gonna be able to feel your nuts anymore. That's it. <laughs> so she brings us around and she's looking at what room it is and it's a big ward and she goes, sees a guy and she goes, hello, I am Dr. Heidegger from Germany. I am going to squeeze your testicles. And the guy looks up and says, don't worry, you will not feel a thing. So we're looking around, she looks up the sheet. He's just starting to call her a demented Nazi bitch. <laughs> and she goes, And he goes, you should have done nothing, right? He goes, oh! And she's going, oh shit. She keeps doing it. And then, then the yell goes, oh, to, oh! She knew how to squeeze pretty hard, huh? So she goes, she looks around, goes at her uh, schedule, and says, Chase, 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 it's not, it's the man here next door. Well, the man next door, having seen Dr. Ball Crusher in action, jumped out of bed, took off down the hall, ran out of the hospital, never to be seen again. <laughs> we still build them, though, you know what I mean? We, we still build them. <laughs> so, I have a shitload of kids. <laughs> One of them's in the audience here. But my son Max, was seven years old, wanted to be a doctor like dad. And to that end, we were coming home when he was seven, a long time ago, on a little airplane from a ski trip. I'm sound asleep in the back, and suddenly over the loudspeaker, the flight attendant says, if there's a doctor aboard, please come immediately to the front cabin. Daddy, Daddy, that's you. You're a doctor. You're so good, Daddy. You're going to save this guy. Go, Daddy, go. He's pounding me. I go, okay. So I get up. I start walking in. Some other guy just pushes me out of the way. He's got a little white scarf on, a leather sweater, and, you know, crock, crock or something. Presents himself to the flight attendant. She says, you're a doctor. You dermatologist? <laughs> she rolled her eyes, looked at me, and I just sort of whispered, cardiologist, you know? She looked back at the guy and said, you see this woman on the floor not moving? Well, I'll tell you what, if this turns out to be an acne attack, I will call you. You go back to your seat. <laughs> but I let down and I felt the pulse. I go, oh, God, not another one. Oh, my God. Give me the defibrillator. Well, guess what? This is at the time where they didn't have defibrillators. I don't have defibrillators. Let me see what's in your emergency kit. She takes it. I open up. Hmm, there's a little blood pressure cuff. That's not going to do anything. There's some Pepto-Bismol. Do you guys remember Bactine? There was some Bactine in there. There's a two-year expired orange juice in there. There was a, then a ton of gauze, which turned out to be just tampons that had got sort of on roll. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I looked at her and I said, I can't do anything with this. She might as well let Dr. Pimple pop her hand open. I don't know what to do. Well, I tried. And I found out when I hit her on the chest, Boom, boom, I could get the heartbeat to go. 
So I had to do that for 35 minutes while we made an emergency landing. Meanwhile, my son Max is in the back going, Mommy, tell Daddy to stop. Oh my God, he's hurting that lady. Please, Mommy, tell Daddy to stop. He can't do that. I hate Daddy. Oh. Well, after 35 minutes, I wasn't so fond of him either. <laughs> well, later, he's now, he's now a psychologist. Well, what is that and, and in fact, go figure. And in fact, two other daughters who were too young to see boom, boom, are now in medical school. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I guess the moral of the story is don't have your kids around if you're going to mess around with patients. But the other moral is thank you guys for letting me mess around with you.